All right, I am standing here at conference with Tommy Prophet. Thank you for being here, man. Yeah, absolutely. Super excited. Give just a little preview of what you're working on, kind of what your day job is, if you can maybe boil <coughs> that down. That's a good question. Um, yeah, I do a lot of uh, producing of cinematic music for TV, film, trailers, as well as for artists and their albums. I'm always working cinematic elements into production. You know what I mean? So for mainstream and worship or whatever it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I love it. Yeah. That's my main thing. You've worked with a variety of different artists. Mm -hmm. You're working on a huge project for Christmas. Yes. Give us a little tease. <clears throat> like what are you working on? Yeah, Who's a involved? Of, a couple years ago, I, I, I've actually wanted to make this Christmas album for 15 years. Oh my gosh. And I finally had a chance to do it in 2020. Um, and it was just like a big cinematic, like movie soundtrack to the story of Christmas. You know, I took this synopsis of like, angels are greeting a king who's being born to save the whole world and like that synopsis alone is like so epic right you can't imagine a more epic synopsis so i'm like that deserves an epic score yeah so if they were to make like a lord of the rings style movie about that story what would the soundtrack be and so i kind of just did all these different arrangements of all of the traditional christmas songs and then paired it with like some of the most amazing vocalists ever just the dynamic of their vocal with the dynamic music and put it together and it's just it's dark and gritty but then it's beautiful and worshipful at times and like it's just like a beautiful cinematic christmas thing i love it it's a one-time event oh yeah it's, so that was the album oh, that was the album last year and then or last year and then 2022 i had the crazy idea of trying to do it live okay so we did it live at the fisher center at belmont yep. in nashville beautiful space and it sold out and it was the most fun thing i've ever been a part of um, and then we recorded and filmed that. So that was kind of a new live project that I just finished of that whole Christmas thing that just came out Friday. Get so out of here. That is online now. And then we're doing it again this year, the live show at the Grand Ole Opry here I in town. It. So yeah, it's been Christmas for the past five years, nonstop for me, I feel like. So yeah, our audience understands Christmas for several months, <laughs> yes. maybe not several years. Yeah. But... Yeah. It's, uh, it's been a long, long time. It's been 18 years. I feel like of planning all of this and like seeing it come. To life is really exciting. I love me. it. Our theme this week is a brilliant <clears throat> symphony. Really kind of tying mm -hmm. into this idea that like there are in, a lot of individual players, um, but collectively we can make a sound that maybe we can't make on our own. You and mm -hmm. I were talking a little about this earlier. Talk a little about kind of your <clears throat> thoughts in that vein. That's a perfect, I feel like that's a perfect analogy too for what I do. Like I don't use my own voice on my own stuff, um, but I do like the cinematic Tr tracks and the music but then I pair with all of these different artists and singers who that's like their strength and when we come together we put our strengths yeah. together so the songs can be dynamic and powerful and the two complement each other and I feel like that's that's always the best result when you can do that versus something that I would just you know be at my house all by myself just doing like it just elevates it when the collaboration is more people and do those artists get to also speak into the process yeah, I, that's I just love it when they come in. I show them an idea, and then a lot of times they're like, "Oh man, what if we did this?" And I'm like, I "Didn't even think of that." Yeah. And then we flip it there, and then I'm like, "What if we do that?" And then it just kind of like stacks on top of each other. And then at the end, we're both like, "What have we just made?" That's so sick, you know. I heard I mean? an artist say the other day uh, when they're in the studio, they feel like they have this like really awesome secret that they're holding in. They can't wait to release, but there's this equal opportunity or equal sort of feeling of excitement and anxiety of like excitement that this secret's about to get out, <clears throat> but anxiety of like, are they going to like the secret, you know, mm. that we've been amping up. Do you feel that? Do you sit in that tension? Yeah, that's sometimes? a really good way of putting it. Yeah. You like, sometimes I have things I'm so excited about and it's, it's months before I get to share it or yeah. people even know about it. Right. It, that Christmas thing is a very good example of that, but other things that I've done too, like I used to finish a song and then that night I would upload it to YouTube and it was like this immediate gratification of like sharing something I had just made, which is really cool. But I don't think as artists, like people don't get to really do things that way often. Especially anymore. when you got a score that you've been working on for 15 years. You yeah. Know? Like, you know, it's coming, but even once it's done, it's like, okay, well then we have weeks of yeah, preparation yeah. and rollout and strategy. It's just by the time it comes out, you're already excited about the next thing, which is something different. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's yeah. it's rare to be excited about the newest thing as it comes out. You yeah. know what I mean? Because it usually takes so long. 
I want to look at kind of, you know, we as a community have been around for 10 years. We're starting to look back, but also look ahead. I want to kind of ask you, what, as you look at music, as you look at creators, as you look at people who are crafting sounds and songs and symphonies themselves, what gets you really excited about kind of what's on the frontier of music? And what gets you maybe a little bit nervous or worrisome of like the environment we're in today about the future? No, that's a good question because... You know, like I said, I used to finish a song and then throw, up and up, uh, yeah. throw it up on YouTube. Like, that used to not be possible. I used to, like, have to burn a CD yeah. or a cassette. I used to burn, not burn, what is it? Record yeah, it onto yeah. a cassette. And then sell them at my school and my church, you know what I mean? And that's the only way people would ever hear this, is if they paid me $5 for my yep. album when I was 11 years old, you know what I mean? And now it's like, you can literally put a camera up and live share instantly anything you know what i mean so it's i like that you get to you have all these outlets to share your art now um and then as far as not a worry i don't think it's a worry but i think one of the difficulties is that everybody has access to those resources too so there's so many people that are instantly sharing their art it's almost overwhelming like every person i feel like has their own list that's like their own uh you know uh, what's it called? You do like you have like a playlist of your artists and subscribed things that you found. You know what I mean? Yep. And like, it it's hard to find sometimes everything that you or be found as a creator. Yeah, as or that's yeah, that's even better point. Like there's there's so much yeah. noise happening all the time. Okay, so I'm gonna throw I a little I'm gonna throw a little curveball at you. So as I this. look at the future of music, as I look at kind of the frontier we're standing in, do you as a creative or as a crafter? have any worries about AI and what's happening in sort of this computer generated stuff? Or do you love it? Is it creating like a whole new opportunity before you? Uh, All right, I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. As someone who makes my own artwork, I like the tools that are available to me now for creating some stuff and still manipulating it and making it my own, right? But as far as the music thing, like I've not dabbled one note into that i don't know what's available and i know you know that that's a thing i feel like that's not going to succeed because if you're if you're an artist the joy is creating yeah and if i were to just be like all right i'm gonna create a new album you know ai make it for me and i'm like all right here it is like i wouldn't even enjoy that there's no passion in it like the you know ex expenditure of creative juices inside of you is kind of what where we get our thrills from and so i feel like the real musicians and the real artists will always want to create themselves and play the instruments record themselves like that's it's just i don't know it's such a personal art so when a computer does it for you yeah some kid might be able to make a beat throw a song on tiktok has 18 million views overnight or whatever and that's his thing or whatever but i there's not there's no longevity there i don't believe I feel like people I know, will want to make. I know Moby always said technology has mm. to precede art. Like the opportunity to create has to be there before a creator comes in and does something with it. Mm. And maybe that's a perspective I hear you saying is like, I love the tools are being developed and maybe there will be a way as artists can leverage some of it, but not, hey, go make an album and release. Right. Like if I could say, you know, certain tasks. Yeah. Or like create this sound, right? Tune or, these vocals yeah. for me, like, good, you know? <laughs> Or, or with this feeling, right? Or with yeah, like or you can maybe play with, or even like, hey, print all these stems for me, and it just kind of like does that, like a a DAW like thing that could be cool. Computer like a task that you just have to sit there and click through. But as, as far as like creating and the art and the music itself, I don't. know. I feel like most musicians don't have interest in that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. I well, love it. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. I guess. Well, thanks for being here this week. Yeah, appreciate you. Dude, thank you. Appreciate it a lot.